Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Megan Nunez of FanDuel, who's here to give us her top picks on this super wild card weekend. What's going on, Megan? Not a whole lot, just trying to find y'all some winners for the weekend. Absolutely, we, we need them. So let's start with what's the first game on Saturday afternoon. It's the Bills and the Colts in Buffalo. The Bills are a six and a half point home favorite. The fans will be in attendance. The Bills Mafia in the crowd for the first time this season. You believe that's going to sway the Bills and let them win by at least six and a half. Yeah, it seems like a lot to lay in a playoff game. However, the Bills ended their regular season on absolute fire. Let this sink in. The last time the Bills were not just completely dominant was back in November when they lost to the Cardinals on that Hail Murray. Since then, they've been just on fire, beating teams by 10 or more points. Um, I respect this Colts team. I think they're well coached. However, I don't think that Phillip Rivers is going to have enough oomph to keep up with Josh Allen and that high-powered offense. Josh Allen and these Bills offense have been able to do whatever they want. But like you said, the Colts, they're not a bad team either. We'll see what Frank Reich can do as he returns to Buffalo here. But you like Buffalo's offense, who's been as hot as any offense in all of football, to get the job done and win by at least six and a half on Saturday. Up next for us, a divisional matchup in the NFC West. The Seattle Seahawks take it on the Los Angeles Rams. Seattle favored by three and a half points. We don't know who the Rams quarterback is going to be. Will it be their backup, John Wolford, or will it be an injured Jared Goff? Sean McVay says he's not going to tell us. Megan, does it matter? So, Greg, you know that this Seattle Seahawks has been my squad this year. Russell Wilson has been my QB and I could not turn my back on them on their biggest game of the year. Yes, there has been some bumps and bruises along the way, but the Seattle Seahawks team are on a four-game win streak, and I think they continue the momentum. Um, whether it's Wolford or Golf, Wolford didn't look great last week against the Cardinals. He put up 18, and that's not going to be enough to keep up with Mr. Unlimited. And I'm not worried about golf if he decides to play him because last time he played the Seahawks, he had a very lackluster performance. I'm going to go with the team that I've been rolling with for the majority of the year, and I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks, laying the three and a half. You have been on Seattle all year. Well, Ross hasn't cooked as much recently in the last month or so, but he's playoff tested. He's battle tested. Ryan Schottenheimer, that'll let Russ cook to these receivers here in the playoffs in a matter of his Wolford or Goff. Russ is going to have his way with his Rams team, although the defense, of course, very, very good. The Seattle Seahawks favored by three and a half. It perhaps was the game of the weekend. The Tennessee Titans are taking on the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, in the last two meetings with Tennessee, haven't been able to get the job done. Titans upset them last year in the playoffs, won in overtime on a 30-yard Derrick Henry touchdown. <clears throat> You're backing the Baltimore Ravens as a three-point favorite here on the road in Tennessee. How come? Um, look, I know that this team this year has looked wishy-washy several times. However, since Lamar Jackson came back from having COVID, he and this team have been absolutely clicking. The last five games, they're averaging 37 points, and that will not bode well for a Swiss cheese Titans defense. Let's look at the last two weeks. Last week, they almost blew a two-touchdown lead to the Texans, and the week before that, they got absolutely slaughtered by Green Bay. Um, it's kind of a theme this week for me. I'm going with momentum, just like my last two games. And I'm taking the Ravens, who have been playing a hot hand here recently. Uh, and I'm taking them laying the three. Baltimore has been hot as of late, riding that momentum into the playoffs. Had to win that final game on Sunday to get in. Lamar Jackson, well, he didn't even have to play the fourth quarter. That's how good the Ravens have been, or at least they looked against the Bengals on Sunday. Let's see if they can ride that momentum against that Swiss cheese Titans defense that you mentioned here. And the Ravens get a victory on the road by at least three. That's going to do it for us here All the fan. You'll hurry up. Megan, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Good luck to you all as well. Before we sign off, I do have to throw this back at you, Megan. Do we got a pick for the national championship game on Monday? Um, I'm laying the points with Bama. I think uh, Ohio State definitely had their, their championship when they beat Clemson and absolutely blew the, the roof off the joint. But... I think with the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith, with Mac Jones, with um, Najee Harris, I think that those three are going to absolutely ball out. They've been waiting for this game all year. They knew they'd be here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take Saban in the spot he's most comfortable in. That Alabama offense should be cooking on Monday night. For Megan Nunez, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with Tom Vecchio tomorrow for some NBA DFS discussion. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.